Hey guys, we are continuing to surge in the race, and that means the knives are continuing to come out. So we're going to keep debunking the myths as they come up, because I think it's important to be transparent and address criticisms. That's part of what it means. If you can't handle the heat, you stay out of the kitchen. And I'm running for president of the United States, so we're going to address any of these criticisms as they come out. A couple of the favorites from the last couple of days. One is this funny, relatively uh, old hack knife one that they're pulling back out that I somehow made a lot of money off of some failed Alzheimer's drug. Wrong. Actually, you know what is true is I did develop a drug for Alzheimer's disease. And like 99.7% of drugs that have ever been tested for Alzheimer's, thousands of other drugs, mine was one of the many that also didn't work. That's just a fact of life. If you're developing medicines, some of them aren't going to work. And in the area of Alzheimer's disease, almost none of them work. Now, the mythology is somehow that I made money off this failure. That's wrong. My company, Royvent, set up a subsidiary, Axivant, that Royvent could have sold shares in, that I could have sold shares in before that failure. We didn't. In fact, many people would call that honorable. That was extremely painful to me when that drug failed. So how did I make my money then? Well, it turns out that I worked on a number of other medicines, five of which are FDA approved today. One for prostate cancer, another for endometriosis and uterine fibroids, another for psoriasis, another for overactive bladder, another for a rare genetic condition in kids where 20 kids a year are born with a genetic disease where 100% of them die by the age of three. And with treatment, a majority of those kids can live lives of a normal duration. I'm proud of those accomplishments. That was part of how I had success in the world of biotech. Yes, that is how you actually create value and make money without apologizing for it. And what I teach young people across this country is, you know what, you're gonna go through hardship. Not everything you do is gonna succeed, but hardship isn't the same thing as victimhood. Hardship is what teaches you who you are. That worked for me, and that's what's led me to success, not just with Royvent, which is a nearly $10 billion publicly traded company today, this, which is the one that I founded and built from scratch, but several other companies like Chapter and like Strive, other successful companies that I've founded since then as well. So I'll be happy to you know, take my entrepreneurial background and business background toe to toe with anybody else. I'm proud to have done that by the age of 38. And it's one of the experiences that'll allow me to succeed as chief executive of this country as the next president. Another lie that I've sort of been humored by floating around is this position that I'm somehow anti-Israel. That's just dead false and reflects the desperation of, frankly, some other candidates who feel like their fundraising might be lagging. And so they need to figure out how to attack me as a way to raise funds. That's what they seem to be doing. The fact of the matter is our relationship with Israel will be stronger by the end of my first term than it ever has been. Actually, I was just talking about my company. Turns out one of the founding investors in my company was actually an Israeli firm. I've been to Israel many times. I have deep respect for Israel. And I think our friendship for, with Israel is gonna continue to a higher level when I'm the US president because I'll treat it as a friendship, not as just a transactional client relationship. What does that mean? I'm gonna lead Israel diplomatically into Abraham Accords 2.0. In my capacity as US president, that'll be a great diplomatic accomplishment. Get Saudi Arabia, Oman, Qatar, Indonesia into that pact. Further partner with Israel to make sure that Iran never ever becomes a nuclear powerhouse, never becomes nuclear armed. We gotta make sure of that. But I also wanna learn from Israel. Israel has great border policies, tough on crime policies, a strong national identity, a missile defense system that I would love to have in this country. That's what friends do. They make each other strong. They learn from each other. That's what our friendship with Israel is going to look like. I'm going to have a good relationship with Bibi. I'll invite him to the White House in a way that Biden didn't have the courage to do. This is what it means to be a true friend. And no, I don't talk in the way that a standard establishment GOP politician does reading from a super PAC provided binder. That's not how I roll. I speak authentically, but that's actually gonna make for stronger friendships with our allies on the international stage. And more importantly of all, actually make us stronger as a country here at home. In case people forgot, that's actually the job of the US president. So keep them coming. I know the knives are gonna bring out some more attacks and it's all right, we'll keep addressing them, having fun with it. Talk to you.